Hi, my name is Simone and I'm the Zen Mommy. And today I want to address a question, a recent question I had from someone who posted on my video, um, Angels and Demons, Are They Evolved in uh, Oracle Tarot Card Readings? And in that video, I break down a little bit about, you know, the religious belief system in order to, to really get into that. And I'm not going to get into that. I'll link the video if you want to see it. I think you should check it out if this resonates with your journey. And, oh, listen, there's a siren. Um, give me a second. Okay, sorry about that. I let the ambulance pass so I won't be distracted. Um, okay, so I'm going to try to talk a little louder here. Um, something's going on with my phone where it's been lower lately. I, it's just getting old and I need a new phone. And um, it's slightly cracked. Also, for those asking about a microphone, <laughs> my phone won't take a microphone with its recording app. So there's that. But don't worry, I'm going to get on my list of things to fix. Anyways, back to the question. So this person said, my family is uh, what's the name of that religion? <laughs> okay, some type of Muslim uh, Farrakhan religion. I'm sorry, I wish I had the name <laughs> when I started before I started this video. But uh, it's one of the Muslim religions. And um, I guess they're, so after they told me about this, like I didn't know much about like Muslims and the different, you know, those religions. Cause my, my, my background experience was in Christianity. So when she wrote me, and I think it's a she, so please don't be mad if I have that wrong. Um, when she wrote that question, I went to look in it. She said that it was a woke version of Christianity. And her family was pressuring her to, I guess, believe or join this belief system, this religion. But they believed that they were a God already and that they had their own power. And although they respected you know, and like some of the, I, the the ideals of the beliefs, they didn't want to give up. They didn't want to conform. And they didn't really know what to do. And they wanted someone to weigh in on that or give them advice or whatever. So I thought about that. First thing I did is I started researching this religion, this Muslim religion. And I feel like I need to know the name of it right now. Hold on. <laughs> All right, so I'm sorry. It was bothering me that I couldn't think of the name, so I went to ask my husband. It's the Nation of Islam. Um, Farrakhan's Nation of Islam or something like that. So I didn't know much about it, so um, I have a friend, you know, a friend I had before my awakening. She was a Christian. She was a minister. She had a PhD in theology, and I um, I had my awakening, started my YouTube channel, and you know I started letting go of the whole Christian belief system and stuff. And I remember she was like, "Why did you walk away from God?" <laughs> and it's just like it's it's the assumption that they thought I walked away for something when I just realized who we really are and we didn't need to play the game of being a servant under another God when we're actually all gods. Um, anyways, so she ended up switching belief systems. Like she started to become a little more conscious, a little more awake, but she went into another religion and I thought it was the Nation of Islam when I referred to this. Um, commenter and I said you know I have a friend that went there I'll look into it more and 
Um, so I started looking up everything I could about like the Nation of Islam and oh boy, this whole religious thing got bigger than what I thought. <laughs> And so I was just like, okay, let me call my friend, you know, she's with the Nation of Islam, she can, like, we, I like, because I feel like it's good to know a little details about it before I like, you know, try to talk about it. Even though I feel like, you know, all, all the religion, you know, it's a religion, it's just everybody has like different sets of beliefs in religion. And so I call, I tell her, I said, yeah, I said, um, can you tell me about your belief with the Nation of Islam, whatever, and she's like, I'm not Nation of Islam. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> she says, I'm Hebrew Israelite. And I'm like, oh. Um, I said, okay, so you're not the Nation of Islam. <laughs> and she's like, no. She says, we are the true Israelites. Like, we're the true. And I have been watching all these videos about the Nation of Islam, and they were saying they were the true ones. And they were saying that, you know, the original people that started the Bible, uh, whatever that group, the Jewish people, that's what, they started saying that, like, they're not really that, you know. And some of these belief systems go as far as calling, you know, Jewish people or Caucasian people the devil and that's like a part of their belief system that they believe that they're devils and then there's belief systems that believe like mormons they believe black people are devils okay and it, it just it, it, it became interesting to kind of look down this rabbit hole right and so these sects of religion so that when i sat down and i listened to my friend i said okay you're not the nation of islam how about you tell me i still want to know about your, she was so happy. And let me tell you, religious people are so happy to tell you about your, their religion. And she's like, I can tell you about it. And, you know, I just, and I was just like, it's good to know because, you know, I'm talking about this stuff. People have questions about this. And at least I know what they're dealing with when they come to me about something like this. And, you know, I pretty much gathered that it did sound like a woke version of Christianity. But the the funny part to me is all of them thought that they were the, the main, the chosen ones, the first ones, the original ones. And the the Hebrew Israelites, they believe in the Bible, but they believe in other books before the Bible. They have books that it's talking about Adam and Eve experience and stuff like that. So, and they're more open to like nature and herbal healing and stuff, unlike Christianity really was. And so I pretty much gathered that, you know, um, <laughs> religion is just very, it's, it's so many, like even with Christianity, there's so many sects, so many belief systems. Everybody's the chosen one. No, we're the 144,000 and only us is going to be saved. You know, you really have to beware of the religions that have the us versus the me versus them thing going on. Now, I just want to share <laughs> what I was learning when I was looking into that. And, you know, I don't know, it really perplexed me to see how far these belief systems go. And especially when it starts getting into, like, dealing with race and stuff, you know. Here they are, like, how do I say this without sounding mean? I don't want to say the word manipulating groups of people, but, okay, so groups of people that have, that have associated with the whole racism thing, the injustice of slavery. Um, oh God, there's no way to say this. That doesn't sound right to me. Okay, I gotta think, this is, should I be saying this on video? Um, it just amazes me how 
how I understand why people follow along, right? So I'm just gonna take it there. People of color seem to need to resonate with something that makes them feel a part of it. Because we've been programmed to believe a lot of things, you know. There's been like this whole history like of, of slavery, having, you know, your history taken away from you, your beliefs taken away from you, your origins. So a lot of times people of color don't feel connected to anything. So the first thing that comes up is religion. And because religion was programmed very early, the Christianity thing, Christianity was forced, you know, during that time period. And even under that, there was a lot of control and stuff. So I can see why, like, some of the people of color, certain people of color, need to feel, feel the need to be a part of a religion that empowers them and makes them feel they're not unworthy as reality tried to make them feel so I, I mean I get that right but I just I wish they could see beyond that you know I wish they can see the white man is not the devil and vice versa the black man is not the devil like the Mormons think like have we gotten so divided so far from who we really are that we're actually promoting hatred <laughs> And when you, you see where racism is a joke to me because I had a near-death experience. I've been on a body. I've seen what we really are. And coming back into this life, I see, like, it, it's, it's, it's a joke that people are hating each other because of race. It's a joke that people fight and, and, and treat each other bad because we're only a reflection of each other. It's all a bunch of you. It's like this whole reality is source us having multiple experiences. You know, we're all a reflection of each other and we're all one. Like that's the point, we're all one. Just like the ocean. Like I did a video, I talked about this. If you look at the ocean and let that represent all of source energy, which who we are, I believe we're all of source energy. We're all prayer guides. And if you take a thousand cups of water out of the ocean, they will each be in separate cups, okay? And although we're in, so let's just say this body is the cup, okay? Your body is the cup. And your body is filled with your soul, your spirit, okay? And you pour it into this individual cup to have this individual experience. And let's just say thousands, let's say seven billion, because on this creation they're saying we have seven billion. Seven billion cups. That means vessels, physical bodies, avatars filled with water. And I'm referring to spirit, soul, consciousness, source, the creator God. That's us, right? So you're taking a cup, saying to this cup, I don't like your race. You're the devil. And this cup saying, I don't like your race. You're the devil. And it's folly because in the end of days when you get rid of the vessel and pour the cups back into the beach or the ocean, we are the same thing. It is a joke, okay? It is a joke. And um, anyways, I really hope this conversation, did. you know, first of all, you shouldn't be watching this video if you're religious or have this belief system. If you're sitting up here getting angry, this is your own fault because this video isn't for you. This is my channel. I'm sharing my experience and my thoughts and my reflections. Okay. And so, um, back to the, the question, you're being pressured by your family. Okay. What do you do? If you're waking up to a guy, let me tell you what you do. Especially if you're younger, you can't do anything. <laughs> I mean, you can't, if you try to tell them, no, I'm not interested in it, I want to go this route. They're going to pretty much judge you, well, depending on the belief system, right? I do use evil, they might give you a hard time, stop talking to you. 
Honestly, I wouldn't even talk to them about my journey. You have to understand that religion is at a very low frequency. The consciousness is very low in religion. And if you're awakening to who you are, like a creator God and stuff, and knowing that it ain't like that, this is a frequency thing, right? If you know anything about energy and frequency, in order for it to blend together, it has to match. So your frequency is above their imagination. They don't see it. So whatever you talk about, it sounds like blah, 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 foolishness. That's, they think you're a fool and something is wrong with you and there's nothing you can say to open their minds because they're playing a certain game. Their soul, their consciousness have incarnated into that experience and that's what they want to be. Maybe later they'll see it. Maybe later I wouldn't count on it. I would just, if it's going to happen, let it happen. But you can't talk it. You, there's nothing you can say to them to convince them to leave their religion and come over to something, you they are very programmed against this, okay? So you can't, don't and don't feel sad that they don't know the truth. This is exactly the journey they wanna have right now. And maybe that'll shift later. Your journey, your life, your experience, the person, the soul you need to be worried about is you and what you wanna experience. Do you want to, you know, well, let me just join their, the, my family's church just so they can feel better about it. Just so they can, and, and then your heart's not really in it. You know, I just, my only advice is to stay true to you and don't talk to them about this journey. Don't share it. And, you know, there's some people that's open-minded and that'll listen, but they will never get it. As long as they think that they're a servant to something else, as long as they think that they're not in control of their reality, as long as they think our group is better than theirs, or our group is the true ones, they have they have missing the whole point, you know, of waking up to this experience. And I mean, that's all I can really say about that subject, you know, is you know, make your peace with not being a part of it if you choose that, you know. And if it's like a pressure thing and you're young, maybe you have to just go along with it until, you know, <laughs> until you're on your own. If it's like, I, I don't know your personal situation, but I can tell you this. When I was 14 or 13, I was replaced into a foster home at a, at a teenager's young age. And this foster home forced me to go to church. And I was going to another church in another foster home and I wanted to go, and I wanted to go to that one. And they were like, "No, you can't go to your own church." So this church that they introduced me to is the cult that I always talk about that on this channel. And in this church, um, I remember it was like, "I'm not," I don't. I was upset because they were forcing me. I was really angry about that, and I was just like, "How dare you force?" And even at a young age, I knew something was wrong with being forced. And so I sat there in church and I'm like, I'm not partaking in anything. So my foster mother looked at me and got angry and was like, you're gonna act like that in church. I'm gonna enforce, I'm gonna embarrass you and force you to sit next to me on every service. So after that, I'm a teenage girl, all the other teenagers got to sit together, sit in the back or sit whatever. I was forced to sit next to my foster mother, which is extremely embarrassing and humiliating. Like I was a problem child. And so I'm sitting there and I'm trying to stay to my guns. Like I'm not letting you force me into religion. And it just got to the point where it just got annoying to like have to sit next to this woman. And so I started to contemplate in my head, like everybody was kept asking me, come to the prayer line, come get the Holy Ghost, come get saved, get baptized. And so I finally, in my mind, told myself, well, at least I had to convince myself to believe in what that said. Well, I believe in God and they believe in God. We have that in common. And on that common ability, I allowed them to further push me into this belief system. And because I was trying to, okay, make peace with the foster family. I was trying to make peace. 
And I'm going to tell you right now, that was the biggest mistake of my life. <laughs> I wish that I stood my ground about my belief system. That whole belief system took me through a ringer, okay? And I just, I wish there was some way that I could have came in contact with the spiritual journey before I even tasted religion, you know? And so I guess, you know, sharing that, maybe that helps you see, you know? Um, I know a lot of times when, you know, if you're new to my channel stuff, you don't really understand the depth I'm going in when I say I know who we are and I believe we're creator gods and all of this is an illusion and, you know, religion is an illusion and they're manipulating you. It's about control. You know, some people need that control. One woman said a comment, is it prudent to trust the unknown? You know, she did that in her comment. She did this long comment. And I'm like, I can't even talk to you because you think it's okay to trust these books that have been rewritten a thousand times with all of these things that are like clearly wrong in it. All these different religions that are clearly even at odds with each other. And it's just like, you know, Stay in your lane, okay? Because I know what I am. And I don't, I can't even have a conversation. I can't comment because I'm not stooping to your level to argue with you over something I know that's not real to me. You know, that's your experience. And I'm very happy with knowing who I am. And yeah, no, y'all not getting me back. No, y'all not going to win me your props. And they will never see that because in their mind, they think they can win anybody over. So, take it from me, be true to yourself, no matter what that is. If you feel you're into this religion enough and that's the experience you want to have, go right ahead. But, think about what I did when I was young. <laughs> I went along with it just so I wouldn't have to sit next to everyone, just because I didn't want to deal with the pressure. And I'm going to be honest, I really wish I didn't. I really wish I, did, I, went, I didn't go through life with some of that programming. And, you know, of course it worked out in the end, you know, I, it took a lot to wake up and leave Christianity like that, but I'm thankful that it worked out in the end. I'm thankful that I can use my experience to help people. But if you know now, like I, if I knew I was a God then, there's no way I would have let them do that. I would have, if they forced me to go, I would have went, I would have played alone, but I wouldn't have been as involved as that. And as soon as I got old enough, I would have left that place, you know, because, you know, ugh, so bad. Anyways, I hope this video helps um, you or anybody else who are being pressured by their religious family to be in their religion. You know, I know it sucks being on this journey. It makes you a fringe dweller. You're kind of like the outcast. You're not alone. It's just it feels alone right now. But, you know, us waking up to consciousness, starseeds, as I mentioned, it seems that we're placed far apart of each other in this reality, and it seems like we're surrounded by a bunch of unconscious people and stuff. But I just, I really believe that it's not going to be like that forever. And, you know, just stay true to who you are and do what feels right to you on this journey. You know, even if feeling right to you is religion. <laughs> That might, excuse me, what you need, that might be what you need to experience, you know, as far as what you agree to with your higher self. But maybe, like, I was in religion for a while, and I was a faithful servant, and I was trying to testify to people and share my experience. Like, I, they totally had me, you know, and I felt like it was the right thing to do. But when I woke up out of it, it really, it, it, I see that the good in it was it kept me. I was very sheltered and I wasn't harmed by a lot of the stuff in this reality at a young age, you know. But the shelter wasn't a good thing either because I wasn't prepared either, you know. But it it helps me now to look at it look at it now like some of these experiences may help me um, help other people, you know, and it helps me see where I've come from in my experience, how I've shifted. And uh, thank you guys for watching. 
sign up for my email list if you're not signed up already. It will be in the description. Um, check out my website. And um, thank you for watching. Have a nice day.